Hi folks, I'm working on some other projects right now and waiting for some parts and so I thought I'd put together a video on an older project I did called Flickr. I ran across the Globe project a couple of years ago and it got me thinking about how I might build something similar. I had an advantage over that project. I just had to build a one-off and not worry about building for reliability and durability and cost and shipping and, well, you get the idea. The goal of Flickr is to display images on a spherical surface and the way I did that was to build a circular PCB with LEDs mounted on its periphery and spin it at 10 to 15 revolutions per second. By turning on specific LEDs at the right time during each revolution, you can essentially draw in midair using the persistence of vision effect. The biggest challenge here is determining the PCB's angular position at each moment in time. Any jitter in the angular position tracking translates directly to jitter in the image, which your eye is quick to pick up on. The PCB has a number of LEDs around its edge, and that defines one aspect of resolution that can't be changed. In this case, it's 256 pixels. Then, as the PCB spins, you can take an angular slice of the space that the LEDs sweep through the air, and that's the angular resolution. Put some numbers on this. If you assume that there are 256 LEDs, and each LED needs 24 bits of color information, and the PCB spins at 15 revolutions per second, and you have 1024 angular slices per revolution, you end up having to push about 94 megabits per second around on the board. That's not a huge number, and definitely doable. Now let's talk about the individual parts. The mechanical system for Flickr is pretty simple. There's a brushed motor driving a shaft, which has the PCB mounted on it. The motor is driven by a small Arduino and motor driver board. The Arduino measures the motor speed using a magnet and Hall effect switch. The motor drives the shaft using a 3 to 1 belt and pulley reduction system. The PCB gets power through a slip ring arrangement, and the power wires are fed up through the hollow shaft. I had initially decided to use a Hall effect sensor mounted to the PCB and a magnet fixed to the structure to determine the speed of rotation of the shaft for the electronics, as well as determine a home or front position. This worked poorly. It turns out the motor shaft speed wasn't constant during its entire revolution, something I never expected. This caused jitter in the image. In this picture, the board is spinning counterclockwise and should be displaying equidistant green lines, with the red line indicating the home position. You can see the lines are initially positioned properly, but as time elapses, there is more and more jitter in the angular position of the green lines. I ended up scrapping this arrangement and used a slot-based photo interrupter system that turned out to be accurate enough. With multiple slots, I get much better estimates of angular position. The other thing to note here is that the board must be balanced as it's spinning. I built this simple little balancing jig that uses magnets and screws to form a low friction bearing. I can spin the board around and add weights to make it balance. Switching gears to the electronics. I chose to use an HDMI signal from a Raspberry Pi to feed images into the board. The board needs to decode that signal and save it into memory. Then for each increment of rotation, it has to send data to the LEDs. Because this is all time critical, I chose to use an FPGA. It might be boring to go over the schematics, but I'm happy to if folks are interested. Let me know in the comments. In any case, you can find the schematics over on GitHub. See the link in the description. The PCB is a pretty standard four layer board, 15 centimeters in diameter. I routed this in KiCad and used a Python script to position the LEDs and drivers. I'm using six mil trace space and eight mil holes. There's a keypad area towards the bottom of the board that is used to mount it to a 3D printed PCB holder. And here's the back side of the board. You can see the Raspberry Pi Zero and the HDMI cable. This is the shortest one I could find. I wanted to point out something interesting I did with the LEDs. The LED package is the same width as the PCB thickness and by putting pads on both the bottom and top of the board, I was able to solder the LEDs to the side of the board. I did this so that the LEDs would be pointed radially outwards so that they would be visible for a greater portion of the rotation arc. I'm not sure if I really had to do this, but it was an interesting experiment. Let's talk about the FPGA a little. The FPGA handles taking the video stream from the Pi and storing individual frames to RAM, as well as timing the rotation of the board and spitting out the bits to make the LEDs light up. There's also code in there to properly initialize the LED controllers as well as the SDRAM. The SDRAM also requires periodic refreshes and so there's code in there to handle that as well. Again, I'm not going to dive into the details here, but let me know in the comments if you'd like me to. So that's pretty much it. Definitely a fun project. I'll leave you with some footage of the display showing movie. Happy to answer any questions.